Hey guys, welcome to Best in Business, where your passion becomes a success. I've got Dr. Isada Gonzalez here, and she's going to be sharing with us some of the insights on what she's been able to create over the years in the experience of her industry. Dr. Isada, thank you for joining us. And I'm giving it to you for free. Dr. Sada, thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to start by having our listeners get a little bit more familiar with who you are, some of your expertise. So tell us maybe a little quick 60 seconds of, you know, who Dr. Isada is. Uh, well, I'm Latina, obviously. And what I always say is I was conceived in Cuba born in Spain and probably made in the USA. And so that's pretty much my story. I decided I wanted to be a psychologist uh, early on. And uh, I've realized that psychology offers so much more than just a therapeutic environment. There's so many skills and so many things that um, you can use in life, in business, uh, and to build your brand, yourself, your family, and uh, be able to, to use it uh, for, for long term. Nice. So you've really identified this as being more than just, you know, one skill, one avenue thing, more of a something that's going to help you in multiple avenues of life and business. How has that played into some of the business aspects of life? Um, it's really interesting because I, you know, I've taught also. So I've had about 25 years of teaching experience. And I tell my students all the time, you can't focus in on just the degree. You have to focus in on the skill sets that you're building. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes we forget that we're building skill sets. And those skill sets become important assets to our lives. And so as part of psychology, I've built so many assets that it's a lot easy to be able to be in business, to be able to see the psychology of business, to be able to also then have, because I have the research background, to have the research background in business, to be able to look at mindset, to be able to look at uh, personal development, to be able to see why people succeed and, you know, those that fail, why they continue to persist. Failure is inevitable. And if we are able to understand that, that it's part of the process, it doesn't mean that you're a failure. So all of those things are things that you put in your toolbox. And so I suggest to everyone that they begin to assess really what is in their toolbox. What do they have and what are they missing? And in that gap is where you're going to find where you need to grow. I like it. So one of the things that you mentioned that really stuck out to me, uh, don't focus on degrees, focus on skill sets. Uh, and I think that's a really powerful message. Just stand alone right there. Most people aren't getting that growing up. We're always told to get the degree and focus on the education and, you know, get a good job, get something stable. And yet, you know, that, that just doesn't exist today. Right. I mean, you, you have to have a great education, but don't let schooling get in the way of education. A great quote by Mark Twain. And I think what you've been able to kind of implement with your own experience has kind of shown that to be true. Tell us a little bit about the business aspects. What have you been able to create over the, the years of what you've been doing in business? One of the things that I've successfully done, and I was kind of thrown into it, I, I had um, decided that I was going to have a private practice. That was my goal in getting a psychology degree. Uh, it's most clinical psychologists, uh, you know, dream to have their own private practice. Uh, my idea was to be able to formulate a private practice where it could run independently and then be able to, I could kind of take a step back. From it, and then life happens. Uh, I have four children in between um, that dream, and what started off as I'm going to just work a few clients, figure out the business because they don't give you an MBA in psychology school, right? And at the end of the day, you're a provider and you're a business person. You have to be both in order to be successful, and you have to be good at both in order to be successful. And so those are things that I think we sometimes forget, especially for those of us that have a professional degree, that it's great to be of service, and I love to be of service, 
However, we also have to remember that we need to be of service to ourselves. And I know many that you're very faith oriented as well. You know, the, the purpose of money, the, the greater purpose of money is to be able to give back with it. Yes. And yes. so if we don't generate what our potential is that God has given us, then we're kind of like right at the cusp and right at the edge. Yeah. yeah. And so th that's, that's my, my take on it. I love it. And I think I'm getting a lot of feedback. I don't know if you have, um, maybe I don't know if it's here. Uh, but I, I definitely see the, the right side of that because, you know, one of the things that I came across recently was uh, a guy by the name of Cole Hatter, and he has this event called Thrive. And what he shared was this, this really for purpose business model where you could still serve but still actually create a lot of success in the business. He's creating a multiple seven, he's sold over $150 million in business. And he's been able to do that in a for purpose business model where he can still give back, still serve others. Like what I'm doing with, with my platforms, right? I've got all these different platforms I've created that I give away to the world for free. They say, Hey, just get access to this. It's, it's free. It's just me serving. But at the same time, it results in me being positioned as the expert in my industry. It helps me open up new opportunities. I couldn't even imagine that we're even there. And then have a whole you know, community that gets to be served whether they paid you or not. And I think that's really the ultimate service for me is like, I can find a way to serve millions of people simultaneously because it doesn't require my personal time and still be able to serve the clients that I work with very well and be able to create success because I'm also being able to fund all of my passion with my skills and opportunities. Um, I don't know if you know a guy by the name of Greg Reed, uh, but he had done this, this interview, this book, uh, and I, I think I have it downstairs. Um, and he had shared a concept where he interviews these, these multi-billionaires and he's saying, you've got it all wrong, right? You guys are out there talking about follow your passion, follow your passion, when really your passion should be funded by your skills that you turned into an opportunity, right? That you turn into a process, that you turn into a business, right? You're able to automate that business and delegate it like what you were trying to do with your private practice, right? Have right. a process where you can build it up, just now delegate the process where you can then go and fund your passions, where you can give back, serve, start that nonprofit, give out to the world, create pro processes and opportunities. So I really like that concept. and. With your success in business, where have you seen some of the challenges that have come across that you're like, you know what, maybe some of these people need to know these things. If they only knew this before getting in, it could save them maybe years or, or thousands of dollars of headaches. Give me some of those tips. What, what do you got? It's interesting because I always say, you know, um, I, I, I share just like you do, right? And I'm like, hey, listen, I just cut 20 years <laughs> off of your learning process. Um, so one of the things is having systems in place um, and, and understanding that to start, it's okay to start with you, but when you're scaling, you need to scale with others. Uh, success isn't a one person event. In order to have true success, you need to be able to scale with others and not be afraid to share the success. Mm. So my CEO is amazing and I love to share the success with her. Um, you know, I always say all the time, like if it wasn't for her, you know, I'd miss some appointments, <laughs> I'd miss some interviews, you know, some deadlines because she's great. She does. My front team are, is amazing at what they do. Uh, they keep organization. They bring things to the table that I don't have to worry about. And so I worry about being able to do content creation. I worry about patience, obviously. I worry about things that are important and that only I can do. I can't expect my front team member to solve a crisis for someone or to even implement an interview me they can't sit in my position and they have their own skill sets and they're wonderful at what they do and it's okay to share success with people because it's not just about you you're serving someone else and in my office for example 
That's the first thing that I say to everyone coming through my office, whether you're an intern, whether you're a team member, whether you're just there to learn. The focus is not us. The focus isn't even me. The focus is the person that's coming through that door. Yes. And yes. so if we can always keep sight of that, that every single person is an individual with individual needs and that they're there for a purpose. So whether it's my business or your business or the personal development business, a person coming through the door means that they are there with a need and they have sought myself, yourself, both of us at times to be able to guide them, walk with them through what maybe to me and you seem something so simple because we do it all the time. But for someone new, it's scary. It's scary to, to walk that path and not know. So one of the things that, um, going back to your question, one of the things is being able to share the success with other people and make sure that you're ready to scale. Uh, you can't scale too quick because there's only one of you. And so one of the things that I would recommend for whether it's a business professional or someone starting their, their own uh, business venture or idea is really, from the get-go is be able to monetize from their intellectual property so their IP is all of those skill sets that they have write them down begin to create online courses begin to create con which content value serving information and one of the things I was going to say about you saying that you serve in this way what I find and I don't know if you found it Manny but what I find really really interesting is that no matter what information you give away for free, people will always come back because they understand that you are the expert, you are the authority, and that you have gotten to wherever you are at because of that. And, and they can... I say this all the time, and I actually found the numbers on this. I'm a big data guy, numbers guy. So I found that... 97% of the time you give it away for free. So you got a hundred people in front of you and you give every single one of them the blueprint step-by-step step, exactly what they need to do. 97 will take no action without you. They just see you as the expert. And so knowing that this is why I really focus on that serve your way to success business model because a, a report by uh, uh, the national sales executive association showed that 80% of sales in business are five to 12 contacts in now, right? It used to be three to five where we could just make a couple connections and they're going to be like, oh, that's the person you need to work with. We have too much competition now, right? We can connect with anybody in the world with an inbox, right? And so now it's, it's taking us a lot more of building relationships, building value, getting that top of mind awareness. And you got to do that through serving these days. You got to do that through just giving them the reason why they should hire you. Because somebody's already given it, right? Right. And you got twelve-year-old life coaches on YouTube telling you everything you need to know about how to live life successfully, right? And people are eating it up. Oh, that's awesome advice, man! I'll get this kid on stage, or you know, you got all of these people that don't have the experience saying what they've read in book or what they've watched on a show or what what they watched somebody else say on an interview series. And at the end of the day, it, it takes the experience. Someone like yourself that's been in the trenches, has been on the ups, has been in the downs, has been able to see what works and what doesn't. And just the top three things I'm grabbing from here, one is systems. You got to have systems. You need to scale with others. Don't be afraid to share your success. Of course, right? 97% of the time, they ain't taking any action anyway. Monetize your intellectual property. Most people aren't doing this. They're right. giving away their, their best IP in a way that doesn't actually organize their brand. Like for me, I have no problem giving away my, my intellectual property for free, but I'm capturing data in the process, right? If I'm giving away some valuable strategy, text me to get that information, right? Go to this link and you have to log in through your social media or sign up for an account to get access, right? So it gives us the ability to utilize the right systems in place to get these results. Some people aren't even using the right systems. They're not even sharing their advice. I had a guy that wouldn't even get on this interview series because he's like, I can't give away my strategies. Everybody's gonna steal my ideas. And I was like, you really? You've created success with that still lack mentality, <laughs> right? I was like, wow, you got lucky with that, man. But I don't get it, right? It's like, there's no competition. 
right? We could right. each have thousands of more customers that would overwhelm our business. We couldn't even manage that. And yet that wouldn't even be a drop in the bucket to the industry's capability of what you could actually reach, right? So you're, you're definitely hitting the nail right on the, on the head there. Um, what is some way, if somebody wanted to get in the industry, let's say we're, somebody's listening right now and they're in college for psychology. I got a, a, a cousin, or not cousin, a niece, who's just graduated with her bachelor's in psychology. And she may be looking into getting her own private practice. I'm gonna send her this video so she can actually learn from somebody who's done this, who's kind of gone into this space. What would you give advice for somebody just starting out? They've just graduated college with their bachelor's in psychology. Maybe they wanna start going into the master's, but what is some of the advice you would, you would tell somebody starting in this day and age? So in this day and age, I think uh, specificity becomes super important and understanding who you are and, and what you love. So part of my success is that I love people and I love serving all types of people. And so as I built myself, right, I built myself first, not the business. I built myself first. Um, I had all experiences from early childhood, so from two to three, so the early intervention, to my oldest patient has been 98 years old. And I've done that in inpatient, outpatient, uh, group home settings. I really infiltrated the field of psychology because I wanted to understand the life of a person with mental health issues. And even though my private practice wasn't geared towards um, what's known in the field as SAMIs, like severely persistent mentally ill, so like the schizophrenics or the bipolars or individuals that need high structure, um, I knew that I would be working with their families. And so for me, it was really important when someone would come in and say, you know, I've got a, you know, my son, my daughter, my husband, my whatever is in this program and I don't understand it, that I would understand it. And so that I would be their guide. And so for someone just starting out is really understanding what you want. One of the things when I became a psychologist and I opened up my private practice again, here I was, I was like, oh, this is going to be, you know, I'll take a few years and I'll figure it out. And it didn't work that way. And so I had to learn very quickly. And very quickly I learned the child population is really popular. So parents love to be able to ensure kids are okay. And that means that everything happens after school. And so as a new mom myself, then I'm like, wow, now I have to divide my time between the clients I serve and my own children. So how do I do that? And so I became very apt at figuring out how to share my time and how to do things while I was growing this practice. It's a lot easier, obviously, now than before. But that's one of the things. Like, if you really want to be at home with your child, then you've got to figure out a different way. And nowadays, many there's so many different options for individuals going through this process for you to be able to really be successful. And you have to be able to grow with the field. So understand what you want. Um, know that if you wanna be a clinical psychologist, really understand what that means. If you wanna be a health psychologist, understand what that means. If you want to be a child psychologist, understand what that means. Because it may mean something different than what you've learned or what you've seen. Mm. And so, so you don't want to spend four years, five years getting a doctorate degree and then all of a sudden go, like, I don't want to work those hours. Like, I didn't realize I had to work weekends. Uh, I didn't realize I had to get up at six in the morning to do this. You have to really understand because if you can't be 1,000% committed passionate to the people you serve for me then it's it's not worth it yeah exactly so i think a few things that were that were standing out right understanding what you want understanding the specialties within each of these areas right it's not just a general psychology you want to be the specialist and find out what is the day-to-day -day of that specialist what would they need to commit to what is the type of hours they need to do what kind of uh, certifications and qualifications would they need? How big do they need to get their team? Do they need to have multiple offices or can they do this in one? What would be the best city to do this? What's the best demographic to serve based on your skill sets and what you bring in your own toolbox? 
uh, tying in the systems, not being afraid to share the success, monetizing the IP. You know, I think this can kind of go into <clears throat> once you're starting to get more established and want to start scaling the business, but just starting out, I think you've got some really good things uh, that they can take away from this and adapting to the market. I think is really key is really, I had a guy on uh, in one of our earlier interviews and he's done over seven figures in the home improvement space. And what his big claim to fame is really just adapting to the marketplace before they get there, right? Knowing what's coming based on the market trends and where the demographics are leaving and coming and how the economy is doing and where the economy is going to be heading. And so what he's been able to do is start making these chess moves years in advance and being able to reap the benefits before anybody would even consider the opportunity. So it's a very right. interesting concept by keeping yourself really uh, adhered to, to what's going on in, in your marketplace and who you're going to be serving and then getting just 1000% committed to the people you're serving. I like that. So it's interesting, Manny, because, um, you know, I just said for the individual to really understand and be specific with what they want. Uh, my private practice thrives because, you know, I, I still see from early uh, intervention all the way through geriatric. Mm -hmm. And so people always say to me, like, don't you get bored? And I'm like, I'm never bored. I'm like, I never have the same type of clientele ever. And so I'm never bored, you know, and it keeps me sharp. So it keeps me sharp with, you know, what are the kids um, listening to? Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm always watching stuff and people are like, what are you watching that for? I was like, because I know some of the kids are watching it and I want to know what kids are watching and you know, what are people doing and business trends and I'm in New York city. So there's a lot of business individuals that come through my way as well as service providers. And so being able to understand those lifestyles, you know, keeps it, keeps it fresh. So every single day to me is a different day. It's never the same thing over and over again. Nice. I like it. So now my audience, they may have been intrigued with this conversation. They may have some questions. If you guys have questions, just put them right in the comments. I'm going to make sure she gets connected to you uh, and getting those answered for you. But let's say they want to reach out to you privately. Maybe they want to ask you a question. Maybe they want to uh, see what resources they can get access to. What's the best way to connect with you? What, what's in maybe your social media or, you know, how are you typically connecting with people these days? Uh, LinkedIn is a great uh, a platform to connect with me on as well as Facebook. Uh, you can message me, just say that you saw this interview. If you want a, um, a, a personal email, we can do, uh, I believe it's uh, jane at latinamastermind.com. And I, I'm not using mine because it might get lost in mine. <laughs> it won't get lost in Jane's. <laughs> awesome. Well, see, all of this information, guys, will be in the description right below the video. So I want to have her get me the direct links to the LinkedIn, uh, her Facebook, uh, or email or any other information that she's going to want to get to you. So uh, whatever we can have is, is a good resource that our students and our CEOs and our first time aspiring entrepreneurs are, are looking uh, to get this information because this is what it's about. Finding people that have created success, who have the experience that are within these industries because I'm not the expert. I'm not anywhere near in the psychology space at all, but they need to learn these things. They want to learn these things. So bringing people like yourself is, is really the best way I can get this out here. And I think uh, with what you've been able to give us today, my students can, can definitely take away a lot of great insights from this. So I really appreciate you coming on. And is there any one last thing you want to share with our audience before we let you go? Uh, one of the things that I've worked on over the last like two years or so has been emotional influence. I know we talk about emotional intelligence all the time, and I lecture on this all over the world on emotional intelligence, but emotional influence becomes super, super important. And I think that we don't realize how crucial we are to our business. And we can make or break our business. And so for those of you, it doesn't matter if you're at seven figures, if you're at seven figures and not um, emotionally influential, you won't make it to eight. And so it becomes really, really crucial to understand who you are in this process and what's stopping you from going a little further. I like that. That's good advice. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. You're so welcome. Uh, 
we're going to get the, the recordings to our audience. You guys are going to access this on demand uh, and be able to connect with Dr. Usada. If any questions you guys have on this, and uh, if there's anything you guys want to connect with, just reach out. Uh, we'll see you guys on our next episode. And always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. And go serve your way to success. You're listening to Best in Business with Mandy Lopez. And I'm giving it to you for free!